next installment of the Game Junction Podcast. I'm Shane, here with Brandon, Tony, and Mark. So look, before we get too deep into this, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor for making this possible. It's Dubby. Dubby, energy blend loaded with essential vitamins formulated for those who need focus, no jitters, or sugar crash. This is achieved with our patented Neurofactor ingredient, which is derived from the Arabica coffee cherry. Here at Dubby, these guys take pride in the development of a clean formula. It's free of any fillers, maltodextrin, artificial colorings. So head on over to dubby.gg and use our code GAMEJUNCTION1, it's all lowercase, number one, 10% off of your entire order today. So whether you're a game junkie, or a gym junkie, this product's for anyone who wants to be better. Dubby, be better. Game Junction 1. So to kick it all Game off here, one. I think first up on topic is, what's up with that new firmware for PlayStation? There's some neat features on there, some stuff we've needed the whole time, and yeah. it's nice that we have them now at least. Yeah. I know a lot of monitor gamers are very happy. Yeah, 1440p, man. That's that's no joke when you're running the monitor 120 hertz, bro. And the, the, that's the way to do it. The variable refresh rate. Ooh, yes. Now we, we're competing PRR. with Xbox. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, the hardware's yep. already there. I don't know why this wasn't there from, from launch. But my, my thing, I guess, is the software support. You know, like, which games are they, were they pushing on it initially that could have use no, hardware advancements, but hey, it's so, there now. We can, <laughs> the ball's in our court. Our Finally. The, uh, the Better late than never. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. I was going to say on there, I was trying to think, when I saw um, the stuff they were putting on there about like the screen share requests and stuff for, um, that they added like for the PlayStation, like that's all stuff that you would think that would already have been so it seems kind of weird like so some of the features kind of have been there but they are very difficult to get to yes so I think right. a couple of them it's always been a pain was, yeah it really was because i remember when uh like me and tony when we first got into diablo 2 resurrected mm -hmm. that was coming back on yeah it was a little tricky at first like connecting to someone else's game that they were in but I know now they're allowing you to do that with the app and some other things. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. The, the party chat link did never work. Like, I mean, it, it was such a pain to even find your party chat on the PlayStation menu. Like, where is everybody at? And then it's like, to get into somebody's game, you had to go through that chat, which you couldn't find anyway. It was just a big pain in the ass. Right. Yeah. Sending out any any requests on there, it's like where where do you go for this? I, and it, the the I guess the UI menu is just it's just horrible. Well, for me, it's like if you if you catch it when the notification first popped up mm -hmm. on the screen, that was the easiest way. But if yeah, if you if you could I click it fast enough. Problem, like hidden on you. I'm having that problem now. I just had it last night. So I I don't know. Yeah, that's been going on for me for a minute. Having uh, any uh, game invites or party requests. If you don't hit it as soon as you see it up on the screen, mm -hmm. if you go to do it at the bottom, it's a no-go. It mm -hmm. So it's still going on because I'm having issues with it. I just said yesterday. So let's see what Sony does about that. We'll find out. One of these days I'll get to turn my PlayStation 5 back on and play again. Right, exactly. Oh, blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, right. Blasphemy. <laughs> I, I saw that you can now search YouTube using voice command as well. That's a totally life improvement. Quality of life, yeah, yeah. I guess so. So you don't have to use the media remote that they sold you. I love that thing, though. It's a waste of money. <laughs> Sixty dollar media um, remote. That thing was only thirty dollars anyway. Could you even? Can you play DVDs on the PlayStation Five? I never even tried that, honestly. Yeah. Does yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, it won't. Yeah, you can. DVD yeah. or Blu-ray? You can play both. Uh, yeah, you can play both. It reads mm. all. It reads four okay. K, Blu Ray, Blu Ray, I, and DVD. I can say with a hundred percent confident it does. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done it because at first it did not. 
so I'm glad oh. they got that run. I didn't realize that was well, a thing. If you go in the settings, you can't watch a Blu-ray until you turn BD Live on. You have to, uh, if there's a setting, you okay. have to turn BD Live on so before stupid. you can put a Blu-ray in. It is stupid, but yeah. And you have to install a Blu-ray app as well. Oh, that makes sense. On the PS5? Yes. I've yeah. not I've not run into that issue at all. Oh you yeah, know, I have I'm not I've not downloaded right. anything. I can I can watch Blu-rays all day. Yeah, it had me uh, download the day I got it. It's so uh, sad that you know that's after I put a movie in. That's the way you have to play your physical media nowadays is through your gaming console. Gotta love it. Yeah, that's much. what that's what we do. Laser disc in my household. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I'm all beta back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, love, love, love it. That waffle of VHS tapes over there just sitting there collecting dust. That's how I was up. too, man. I was that way. So I just, I just said, they're sitting, they gotta go. Man. They're just sitting. <laughs> gotta move it. What? Let it pass. On a similar, on a, on a similar topic of uh, disappointments here, I guess we could talk about that uh, Stalker Two indefinite delay. I didn't know yeah, Stalker I mean, One existed. I mean, what was Stalker? Funds I, for pre-orders? Wow. I guess that's Ouch. Just, that, that just shows uh, development issues. Every, yeah. Well, that's just every big game now. It seems like. Uh, you they, know, some some they get delays, but if they're refunding money, that means there's some, it's more. Than yeah, that means that it's not coming out at all. There's there's, there's bad development issues. That yeah, means yeah. It might just get scrapped. You know, you know what scale reminds me of. <laughs> It reminds me, yeah, scale down, but also reminds me of um, uh, Duke Nukem. Um, yeah, I only did that thing pre order for eight years, and I left my pre order there because I only put a five dollars $5 on it at GameStop. What was that called? Um, the one for 360. Is that forever? Yes, yeah, forever. Yeah, it was actually in development for 12 years, but there was a point, there was a four year point where they refunded everybody's money. But then six months later, they started doing pre-orders again. That's when I pre-ordered it. Nice. And I had five dollars on it, so I just—it was five dollars. Five dollar pre-order, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right five dollars here, five dollars there. I mean, I got a cool receipt that I can show twelve years later. I still have that receipt. <laughs> the receipt that never was. <laughs> be a valuable asset one day absolutely i bet like the only receipts that i save are the ones lost in a box somewhere that just happened to never get removed and tossed my favorite's finding the ones behind the manual when you open it up you know, oh box, yeah those are good your... oh look there's oh, a receipt oh yeah it's like half yeah, it. yeah mm -hmm. i love that you gotta love it well well and i guess a little more disappointing news so i guess uh the the issue with the ranking system in Splatoon 3, when the profiles got swapped yes. over, like, I, I... This one I know about, yeah. I, I, I really like the first Splatoon. I didn't mm, play me too. 2, but I, I know that I, didn't I pers That would have been very upsetting, even for me, and I'm not a huge competitive player. But, and that's so, why, because... Because that's, I mean, that's basically game. what that game is, correct? It's not really, it's not really yeah. like a, it's a competitive game, period. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a straight PvP really game, pretty much. Right. Mm -hmm. It does have a story mode, a pretty... In a pretty expanded story mode actually there was a whole dlc expansion pass for it but um people in play 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 play. i played through all the story i loved it most people do shut up mark people like it stories like hey regardless here's my take on it i feel like um as far as that goes because i know somebody personally that you know had was up in the ranking system on two. Like mm. I said, I didn't play two. Right. Uh, I played a lot of one. Um, but essentially, what I think they really need to do is kind of since it's a new game, not a new season. Like they do, they do these seasons now, right? For games like this, oh, they do these yeah. seasons. Well, so this sick is of an that. entirely new game. So am I. This is an entirely new game. So what they need to do is basically, essentially, reset everybody yeah but it's start not over. actually resetting everybody start over but start what they reset. could also do if they don't want to just start over like that they could put like hey here's a, a category for people that were over this point say like a high rate 
and then a category for people that were under like the mid. Well, right? does, and then just do doesn't that. Rocket League do that, Mark? Yeah. Don't they have that like diamond tier and then like the under tier? They, when Similar. the game was new, they used to do like hard resets, which means like every season, like every they would just one. completely wipe everybody's MMR, which was a nightmare. Then they went through a period, I believe, so it's been a while. They would kind of do like a, they kind of do that's kind of like a soft reset every season where your rank, you got to redo your 10 placement matches. Mm. It doesn't really, your MMR doesn't really, really change. Just you have gotcha. to replay 10 games to get your rank. But they haven't had like a hard update like this. I mean, they kind of had like the the update from like PS4 to like PS5, but it's all server based on the same server because it's all it's cross platform. So there's no but there's see, no the big issues. With, gotcha. The difference with that compared to like this is that this is an entirely new game. You right. know what I mean? So yeah, if it's, it's not a new season. season. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 And then Splatoon already does season, so with a new game, they shouldn't expect hey. This new game is just a new season. Like they shouldn't expect that. So, I, I don't know. I'm on the fence with it. So we've actually got a uh, we've got Aaron in the chat said that uh, he still thinks Splatoon One with the Wii sensor bar made for a better control, and he wished the uh, he wished the Switch would incorporate 100. a sensor bar so the controls would actually be better. I I'm agree. With quite you, surprised Aaron. that they have not had a sensor bar add-on for the Switch. I mean, not right. other nothing at all. Not really even like a third-party add-on or anything. Mm, nothing. No, and I will say I hate the gyro controls. I don't Take think they're, they're not accurate. <laughs> I think it's there. Accurate. It's there just for it's so games that want to use it, but it feels like they're just going back to standard controls for all their games. Mm -hmm. It's like the standard way to control it. Yeah. That's just kind of there for a handful of games that either want to like use the gimmick or some of the Wii U games they brought over just so there is. I don't. I mean, they didn't have to do as much work on the. Controller. To me, there's not really a good gimmick yeah. for those controls unless you're a doing a flying game or like a damn camera game. One of those two is yeah. about the only things you really need that gyro control for. Anything else, you don't need that at all. I don't think any of the new games really used it. Or you're just going to use the pro I, controller. Exactly. I, yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I do feel that way for the most part but like for skyward sword for instance mm -hmm. if i would have had a motion bar accessory for that oh yeah I enjoy that game tenfold i would have beat it i played one hour of that game because i could not <laughs> handle the controls i just can't do it it's, it's definitely um, a little odd doing it that way mm -hmm. the gyro controls are so inaccurate and you have to reset them off the screen constantly to get them re-centered and it's it's just it's annoying mm -hmm. Should just let me use regular controls. <laughs> yeah, Please. that'd be great, wouldn't it? I, I thought most no. force motion controls on the game was a mistake, but that's like a personal. I mean, the, the Wii did it right, but um, the the Switch did not do motion. That's my opinion. It makes sense though. Yeah, I mean, it was a motion control system. It was there. They're trying to go back away from it now. Back to the like, roots. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, speaking of old stuff and roots, um, we're getting some cool new characters to the Brawlhalla series in the form of old characters. We get, we'll be seeing Simon and Alucard, with some DLC characters Ooh. here in Brawlhalla, which, you know, I checked it out when it first came out. It wasn't exactly my cup of tea. I did like the presentation of it. It is mm -hmm. really neat. But honestly, I'm such a Castlevania fan. Going to bring you back. I might be hopping back into this game. It very well might. Very so well I, I, I haven't I, I haven't played this one, but I'm going to try it now. Nah, it looks like it's a fun game. I've not. I've never played it when it, since it came out. So it is probably one of the best Smash clones that I've played. And god damn, there's a lot of them right now. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous with the mini-verse, the U-verse, the, the, all the verses that are playing out right now. But, the honestly, Brawlhalla is probably one of the better. Well, and it's a little more flushed out than all the rest of them because it has been out for a long time. And, I mean, they've been doing cross-promotions cross with Brawlhalla for a long time. I mean, everything from Ninja Turtles. I mean, it's yeah. almost like the the pop figures of, of fighting games. They've just got so much different stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not a bad fighting game. It's, it's it's definitely playable, enjoyable for you know a good hour or so. I mean, I don't see myself playing it for all day kind of thing. But the Castlevania right. characters could be cool because each each character does have their own move sets, kind of like Smash. It's not it's not copy and paste moves for every character, which is nice. Yeah, and I've, I've heard similar that of all the Smash clones, which I'm 
Yeah, I'm kind of burnt out on seeing so many of those, but yeah, always did hear that that was one of the better ones. So that is why I initially checked it out. So yeah, I'll, I'll be coming back around. I don't know. I think, I think I'm in the opposite of you. It looked like a Smash clone, so I'm just like, I... See, I, I was never good at Smash, so it kind of pissed me off. Like, hey, but Smash, Smash, me Smash and Maybe I can be well, good at this one. <clears throat> right, that's how I feel. I've never been good at Smash. Well... And I don't know. I feel like I used to be better, but uh, I'm not good at Smash now. And um, I just enjoy playing it, you know, here and there. I just, I don't play competitively. So trying these other games like Multiverses, I feel like I'm better at that game than I am any Smash Brothers I've played. Like, the controls are a lot simpler on Multiverses than Smash. It's Smash it? you know, uses more combos, it feels like. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like a few other new ones that I've, I've tried that are newer. Oh gosh, I can't even think of what they are. That are all Smash clones too. So there's a bunch of them right now. And I'm, so getting, so our live audience, our live audience in my living room had a question, and they want to <laughs> know what IP would you pick to make a Smash clone out of? I mean, being you so know right now. Oh, let's hear it. And they just released it, and they stole my idea. I had no idea this was even coming out. Lego. Ooh, Lego Smash. Ooh. Hey. That's it's, interesting. It's called Lego. Lego Brawls. Here's the reason. Lego Brawls. Think of all the IPs. Oh, they Think got everything. The Dude, Lego's Lego. got everything. Exactly. They got and everything from fucking Lego Indiana guys. Jones to Star Wars, man. Right. And it just real. released last Lego week. Lego Ninjago. <laughs> yeah. Ninjas. That's in there. Lego That's Ninjas. Yep. That's so interesting. Go That's a good one. Y'all forgot it. You know, why not Why not Bionicle? Or Ooh. Bionicle. That, That's in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the forgotten. That's in the game. Right? Right. That was that I'm was what our go question was from. Older, a Lego City. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Lego Space. <laughs> Lego space. Uh, it feels like it would all go within the within the Lego brand. Like Lego could just literally yeah, remake that's... every game that's ever been made with Legos in it, and it would just sell because people fucking buy Lego stuff. Oh, Legos. And, yeah. uh, like all I said, I'm not even a Lego good. fan. They were good. They uh, were well, actually decent. They're, none of them are bad. Yeah, none of are. them are bad. I haven't mm. played a bad one. So let's let me tell you one. Let me tell you one you guys gotta play if you haven't played it. Lego Undercover. It's on the okay, Wii U. And, I'll play that one. Okay. and they ported it. it to the Switch. It's a GTA Lego game. Oh shit. Nice. Straight nice. up. GTA I mean, Lego game. I mean That's to good. be fair, like the last Lego game I played was like was it in like the 360 era and they were put down like the Lego Star Wars? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think like oh, uh, our fighting game goes like <laughs> I have to be able to like build certain things and then bash you over the head with it, and it just breaks. If you're gonna make a game like yeah. that, you have to have building there somehow. Oh, you totally yeah. could. You could totally be, build your character. Be you could build weapons for your character. That would be cool. No, it isn't like it's like a new. Fun. I don't know how you would make it work, but like during the like in the game, you like construct something while you're fighting. That's like your mm. ultimate or something like that, and then you bash somebody with it or something. I don't know. It, it could do like, like a new. It could yeah. do actually like Smash does, and drop little pieces as you're playing, and then you just collect the pieces as you're fighting each other and. If yeah, you get all three true. pieces, think, bam, you got your you were, whatever. I just, yeah. I saw it as like a never ending uh, content machine, really. That's pretty that's much. That's how I saw it because they've had all the, I mean, they've had Sonic now, mm -hmm. they've had Atari, uh, yeah. Nintendo. Um, I mean, it's just a never ending thing. So I was I've like, got a perfect one they need to do. They need to yeah. do Lego, Lego Dragon Ball, like Dragon Ball Z. Ooh. How cool would that? Be? I would play they that. Need, I would play that. Mega Man for me, please do Mega Ooh, Man. Mega Man Lego. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'll buy every set. <laughs> that'd be good. Just Lego everything at this point. Everything in pop culture is the Lego. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's I Lego like, is the pop figure of video games. Like you know, the little pop figures you can buy in really Walmart is. or whatever. Yeah. Like that's that's yeah. Lego of video games. <laughs> Yeah, it really. Is, much. Though, I agree. Everybody Lego, them. Lego can basically approach whatever company they want. And they're like, "Hey guys, we want to do this." Okay, yes, please do it. Do it. <laughs> I, my problem with Lego is that I've actually wanted to buy multiple sets. Mm -hmm, I wanted mm -hmm. to buy the Atari set, and I wanted to buy the NES set, like the actual systems. They price those things so high, oh, it's yeah. just I can't do it, man. It's Legos are expensive. Tough. Two hundred and fifty dollars nice. for the Atari one. Yep. Oh, and not paying that. Three hundred dollars for the NES set. That's like that's yeah. like mid tier. Like you can very easily drop eight hundred dollars well, on a single Lego set. The um the uh, Death Star, my buddy got that. That was a six hundred dollars set. Six hundred dollars. Be more now, probably. Crazy. 
So uh, we got some more oh, got yeah. some more chat comments. Uh, Ryan Pugh said that uh, his answer for the uh, the Smash um, crossover would be a Disney IP, like straight Disney characters, even though like some of the games do have Disney in them. Uh, you know, he said the biggest money crossover I, is definitely going to be a, a Lego Pokemon game. Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like they still oh, haven't done a Lego what? Pokemon yet. Best crossover. Well, they haven't. Lego Fortnite. That goes Ooh, both ways. Right. You got building in both of them. <laughs> Lego yeah, Fortnite. That, bro. See, no, no. Actually, I would play more of a Lego Fortnite because I think the building and that would be a lot cooler because you could do it like in the actual Lego games, like when you walk up to a pile and it goes and just makes the shit. I would love to see that building a lot, that animation a lot more than like walls just flying up around me. Oh, I feel it. Yeah, I think that's the next major Fortnite update. Is somehow they incorporate Lego into a game mode or something like that? They got to. They got to. So here's some here's something for our listener Ryan Pugh there. You know, something I read just yesterday, Disney is coming out with a card game that is supposed to be a competitor with Magic the Gathering. Oh, okay. It's be ah. all Disney characters. And ah. It looks awesome. Bro, it looks that awesome. sounds really cool, actually. Yeah, it's <laughs> it does. I, mean, they have so I am a character. That would be one to buy that closet, first set, closet, get that first set, just boxes. Get boxes of that first set yeah. when it first releases and just put that shit in the closet and wait. Like, that'd be one of those things that really, like... Right, nothing nothing will ever yep. hit like Pokemon did again. Oh, no. Like, there's just gonna be too many of these cards. Well, you say you say they're did. Map, you right? say Pokemon did. That shit is still kicking. Like, literally, my kids oh, yeah. just started collecting was... Pokemon stuff. My son's going on Facebook Marketplace buying books. He's like, is any of this stuff good? And I'm like, I have no idea, son. Go for Yo, it. Yo, the crazy thing about Pokemon cards is <laughs> even now, like... Box sets that came out like five years ago are, are more expensive. Yeah, like the, the box sets themselves yeah. are more expensive than any card. Like I know I mean, I'm that's crazy to me. Them. I don't I don't you know go crazy on mild like, If you want to make money off Pokemon cards right now, you just buy the sealed box set and you just oh, sit yeah. on it for like ten years. Yeah, yeah. that's where the money sure. is. Not the, not the individual card. And then it's in the it's, it's, yeah, it's in the chance to get that card. Is what it is. It's yeah, in the no, chance like, to get the right. card. Sealed packs go for way more than the damn card does most of the time. It's so crazy. Yeah. When stuff that I've seen, so to open I, up. I don't dig into Pokemon much at all. I try to stay away because I just don't know anything about it. It's an expensive. It's expensive. Pokey yeah, crack. it is. Poke <laughs> crack. If you want anything old, you're better off just buying the cards individually in a pack than don't even bother going after after the packages. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, then. One thing about the Pokemon game is you you can actually play and enjoy the game without all of the crazy expensive valuable cards. Mm. So at least that is right. Plus that's if you just that's exactly yeah. what my son is doing. Play, you can buy those, those, those stuff, cards. You know, people don't even play with them. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't. It's just it's like a collecting. They don't play with those cards. Exactly. Yeah. And I heard a statistic of like something like eighty percent of uh, Pokemon collectors don't play the game. <laughs> so, I, I believe that. Kind of that. Kind of I believe but it. You, too. But you gotta like you gotta store them properly, so they go in like a plastic wrap, like a mm -hmm. thin plastic there, and then it goes into like the hard plastic. She can't damage the cars, though. They're gonna lose right. Yeah. yeah. No, no thumbprints. Thumb right. No. No thumbprints. No, it's, it's it's crazy. I can't see the comments for some reason. I'm having uh trying been trying to pull those up. I've got a couple here, so I've got a uh, I've got my uh, Game Central Station events page pulled up over here, and then I've got the Game Junction podcast comments over here. So I got a couple of them covered. All right, both cool. angles covered. Well, 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 let's All see right. what they think about this. Uh, I know Brandon's excited for this one. So, Sonic Frontiers, more content than we've ever seen in anything with Sonic's name on it so far. Yes. Which I would have hoped yeah. so, but come on, Brandon, clue us in. I know you know all about it. Yeah, I mean, really, just to say that it's good to hear that, but <laughs> my worry is that. They do too much content. The mm. content isn't polished and clean content. You know, just, you know, we don't want any frame rate issues for a Sonic game like we've had many times. You because, can't. You uh, cannot. I point. would rather hold them, hold that shit off and make those frame rates right because that game is too fast and too action to have fucking frame rate drops in the middle of that stuff. Yeah, right. And I'm in, fast. I'm in no won't. hurry to get another Sonic game, right? Because we're constantly getting Sonic games. So, to, yeah. yeah, they. I mean, we're, Forces just came out. I feel like maybe it wasn't last year. Maybe it was 2020. I can't remember. But um, yeah, I just I would rather have a polished game than them just put something out. And right. with them doing open world Sonic, I mean, 
they're essentially taking the Breath of the Wild um, formula and applying that to Sonic, and that's been said in interviews. Let's, you know, take the time to get everything polished. Let's let it run like Breath of the Wild, or it should run better than Breath of the Wild, because we're at the end of the life cycle. That was the beginning of the Switch, you know, so we really crazy. should be running better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I hope that this more content is just good, polished content, and that it's not, you know, going to make the game crappy, essentially. I've got to give one of these newer titles the, the time of day, because I'll be honest, like, I I think the, the last Sonic title I played was R, or maybe, yeah, R Man. on Saturn. If it's you're going to, just don't play anything and just play Sonic Mania, because that is essentially the well, real it's... Sonic 4. Okay, because I I thought Mania was awesome, and I did I mm-hmm. totally forget that I did play a little bit of that one. Oh, and, uh, great. It's great, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was pretty good, so. And then if you didn't play the DLC for that, it, I mean, the game gets better, in my opinion, that DLC, so. I did play, play Mania, Mania, but I didn't play through release. it. I did play a good bit of it, and I really was enjoying it, because it really was, it kind of took it back to more of that old-school Sonic feel, versus, cool. like, you know, them trying yeah. to do something that yeah. wasn't working. Right. Right, and if you're playing it on PS4, you got a super solid frame rate, you know, mm-hmm. st- steady frame rate, 60 frames. So uh, I think it's 30 on Switch, but if you get um, plus, it has that DLC all on the cart. So oh, nice, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the way to go for it. Get it all together. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, so, I mean, that's my thoughts. I don't know if anybody, you know, anybody else has anything to say about it. I would like to play a, I would like to play a good Sonic open world game. I think it would be cool. I've always loved that yeah. character. The character it's... itself made sense. It was different than everything else out there. It just needs a good fucking game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good look. I agree. Yeah, I like I agree. the concept with it, but yeah, like you said, I've every time they've come out with new ones, they just kind of didn't seem to appeal to me. But it's like, I want to like it, thing. but. Has a bad track record. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that I don't know if you guys know like the story with Sonic Mania, but essentially, um, Christian Whitehead did the ports for Sonic One and Two to mobile, and they are to this day the best way to play those games. Um, and he did those. He he made a Sonic fan game, so Sega hired him. So he made those ports to mobile, and Christian Whitehead is the one that made this entire game. So he is a. Um, he, I mean, he used to call himself like a, a ROM hacker, like a fan game <laughs> maker. But yeah, I mean, he was just like, you know, he was just a dude that likes Sonic. So like, it, it takes somebody that is just a Sonic fan and doesn't even work for Sega to make a good Sonic game. All right, so, so and keep, apparently that's, that's what cool. it takes. Keeping that's on cool. that making somebody Sonic games. Cares. Yeah. Have you, you got to get in uh, uh, Dreams on PlayStation and check out some of the Sonic fan made games in that. Some of those are actually pretty damn good for, for, having to put a game together in a game like that it gets people put time and dedication into that stuff because they really do love sonic and there's games out there you can play yeah. even in like dreams um i'm sure there's some stuff in like rec room that even like sonic um sonic theme rec room yeah. games that yeah. you can play in vr I heard that. Like it's, I heard yep. that. Pe- people want it um, people there, want a good one there's a rumor about uh, a ps5 uh version of dreams coming out so mm. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, if and they could do that, are, and they could use some damn out. really nice game engines, you could make some badass shit, that's for sure. Because I've seen some of the stuff people are yeah, already making in Dreams, and it's good already. That would be dope. I'd pick that up probably day one. I wish I had played Dreams when it came out, but, uh, I mean, I could still pick it up, whatever, you know. Like, if they did a PS5 version, I'm all in. Didn't someone finish PT in Dreams? Like someone yes. built out the entirety yeah. of PT. Yeah, in it. Yes. I heard that story. That's impressive. Um, yeah, it I looks good too. I mean, it, it's it's kind of a retro feel to it because I mean, it's obviously not like you know Unreal Five engine graphics, but like it it does have that really good yeah, retro well. feel. And if you're playing it in like a VR setting, because you can actually play it with a VR headset on, I believe in the um, oh, the, the PlayStation headset. Even better. It is fucking immersive. It's pretty cool. It's cool. What were you playing earlier, Tony? Uh, so I was just in VR chat, goofing around. I was a banana. He was walking around. He's walking around VR in chat. his house in his underwear with his uh, with his headset on. I mean, why not? <laughs> the problem is you failed. Like he's a banana. You gotta like you gotta get that cute 
lolly anime avatar figure. Yep. With that deep voice. Hey, hey, what's up? You gotta get enough. Straw man. I was actually I was actually taking some screenshots to send to James Parker, and I was gonna be like, "Hey, look, is this UNVR that I found?" <laughs> we got we got really we got a buddy that goes to game dude. conventions dressed like a banana. He likes to make a grand entrance. The the banana. <laughs> no. Yeah right. Oh, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Well, um, tell me, did uh, I mean, I I know at least one of you on here played Red Dead Redemption Two. I did. Yes. I, I yes. definitely didn't beat the game. I got hours in. I, I got hours into that oh, game. Yeah. Crazy, my my crazy wife loved watching me play that game forever. Well, uh, apparently now, if you do manage to beat it, I guess there's a hidden new message in the credits and people are, I guess, rumors are being spread that maybe it's uh, kind of like on its last wind, it's on its on its way out unofficially. Really? Kind of like, well, it's kind of like a goodbye message. Uh, mm. it's, I heard they did that on GTA on, 5 it, also. It's, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, thanks for being in this with us. Uh, I got the uh, message here if you want me to read it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our heartfelt thanks. Yeah. Yeah, our heartfelt thanks to everyone who has helped create Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online. So are they finally actually releasing a new game after like a decade? <laughs> GTA 6! GTA 6! They're working on it. I think we can oh, really you know what? It's being worked I didn't even play GTA 5. I played Red Dead Redemption 2, but I didn't even play GTA 5. I've I've maybe I've fifteen years in it. For, <laughs> I've dabbled in it for a couple of hours, but um, you know I haven't really played a GTA game since San Andreas Stories. Okay, on the I highly I recommend. I highly recommend you play GTA Five on your PlayStation Five, but only the story mode. Fuck the online. I don't care about the online. Me personally, I don't care about yeah, the I've online. Never done GTA play through the story right. mode. The story mode's actually really good, and it looks freaking amazing on the PS Five. I've got it downloaded on here. I just haven't played it. You gotta try. You gotta give it time. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. The, the story mode on it's actually games. really good. It's really good. It's it's a good flushed out yeah. story now. Like I mean, shit. Like 15 years. Like Mark said, they've had plenty of time to update the shit. But uh, right. being, being yeah, that they're no, finally getting ready to like stop supporting it and everything, it's it's definitely worth the playthrough on the story mode. Isn't I, mean, I could be wrong on this. Cause I think we've talked about it. Isn't GTA GTA Online going to just stay GTA o Online with six? Probably. Just, yes. Right. Okay, so they're not going to like do a two like a GTA Online two. No, I don't, don't think like so. At, at, from from my understanding, it's going to stay Grand Theft Auto Online, and then they're just going to release six as its own story. You'll still play Grand Theft Auto okay. Online like it's being played now. Maybe they'll implement some of the six features into the online version, but it's just going to continue on, like just like uh, yeah, just like Call of Duty, you know, does like a, maybe a new map update or yeah. something like that. But it just stays, you know, Warzone the whole damn time. Even though there's supposedly going to be a name change to Warzone has been leaked. I don't I care, but too, really. they're talking about a Warzone two. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I don't play anymore, so I don't they, care. <laughs> dude, their their naming system, oh goodness. Oh Terrible. Goodness. Yeah. Wor worse than Xbox. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Let's yeah, get creative, you know, Warzone 2 Electric Boogaloo or some shit like that. <laughs> I wish they would, hey, though. Take it. I'd watch yeah. that. <laughs> I'd watch somebody play that, dude. I wouldn't play it, but I'd watch it. Oh, man. Good stuff. Well, so, um... I'm going to be honest, this was complete news to me, but I definitely thought it was an interesting uh, featurette to speak up here with our topic. So what's this lawsuit? I guess GameStop has been secretly recording their customers' activities in their stores. So they secretly have a Secretly recording? Yeah. Like, how, does, how do you secretly record? I guess you just don't tell people that you are. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Is that every yeah, store so recording fun. people? That feels. It's a that's a data harvesting thing, is what it's being spoke about. You know, I don't think anyone's officially went on the record with GameStop, but I think that that's. I, I don't know how that, that legally works. I'm, I'm sure it some states it affects more than others as far as like yeah. consent, I like one or two laws. parties consent. So I actually did read a little bit about this one. I read into it a little bit, and according to what some of the lawsuit was saying, that it's it's a lot to do with their online transcripts. Like when you log into GameStop's oh. website, 
and you have a you have a you have a chat conversation with like online tech support people are taking that chat data and selling it to like third party uh sponsor vendors whatever the hell you want to call them yeah. Data suckers, so basically. Just, I could buy that. So they're doing what every other online company that. does. Then, right, much. and they, yeah, exactly. there's no there's no it's warning ahead of time when you dead. when you log into the chat. Oh. There's no warning ahead of time that says this data is going to be collected and used for good. whatever purposes. It's just you know you log in and start chatting with somebody on there, and then they're just taking that shit and selling it without your express consent. Well, exactly. Yeah, typically with things like that, yeah, there's a message, there's a disclaimer, there's mm-hmm. something saying like, hey. This may be recorded for training purposes, whatnot. And yeah. yeah. Apparently, there's exactly. zero disclamation of it. So I don't know. I feel like it's not going to really affect them at all. It's going to get it's going to get handed out of court. Some legal loophole. Yeah. going to change some stuff. And yeah, some, somebody will get a payout and it'll move on. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe their stocks will pump up again. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pump oh, those maybe. stocks to pay for that lawsuit. I mean, dude, they yeah, hold. Man. They made a whole movie about GameStop stocks. Which what? I've yet to Why? watch, but I heard it's an interesting watch. Actually. Oh shit! I need to check well, it out. Well, a movie. It was a meme movement. Like, let's be real. <laughs> there's no, there's no movie there. It was like a behind the scenes, like why it happened and people involved. And like, I that, think they, people love that movie, dude. I've been told I know, to watch I know, that, like, I know some people that made some fucking bank when that shit was happening, though. They got, they were smart they and got in like right, right at the beginning because they heard about it. And I'm talking, come out with some grands. Yeah, that was, that was one money made like thirty grand doing it. Yep. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. I think actually, I think that was three dollars stock. When that stuff started happening, that was the reason I actually downloaded like Robinhood and fucking Coinbase and all those Me damn too. the investing apps. Like, oh shit, video games and investing. What is this all about? Yeah, yeah I think yeah, yeah. I think it all started with the. Uh, it's not GameStop. It was some the some dope. movie. Uh, what's the uh, the theater? Place and they started with the theater thing. Oh, AMC. Oh, yeah. oh, AMC. 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 Yeah. AMC. And then it just like bled over. Yeah. 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 You're, the first yeah they talked they about that, I guess, in that movie. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because AMC, it was during COVID. So, <laughs> what right. Right. Who was. Like. It was something uh, like, hey, let's nope. meme GameStop back into life. Let's go. It worked. <laughs> It worked. Uh, it it got popular again. Yeah, people started going enough it enough did. where they could remodel their stores and start fresh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They did announce like a, a what is it like a I forget what it is, but yeah, they were starting over all the stores. It's like a, it's like a restructuring or something like that. Restructuring yeah. or something like that. Yeah. 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 Which was all bullshit. Exactly. Pretty Here, was. Here's one of my favorite favorite features of their restructure. You ready? So they would have. Games on their shelf that you went to purchase and you picked it off the shelf and took it to the front and they told you, oh, we don't have this game in stock. We'll have to mail it to you. Because the the display cases on the shelf are only like the top selling games or they yeah. only have the top selling yeah. games in stock. So it's like if it's not in the top like 100 or top 25 or some shit, I don't remember the exact number, they had to get you the, the disc mailed to you. And I'm like, no, that's so stupid. I'm coming yeah, in here to buy this game. Dumb. like. I've never, I've never ran into that. Every time I go into GameStop, if it's on the shelf, they have it. If it's not, they, they don't have so it. So they had it in like two or three I stores around my local area, and I don't think they're doing that anymore because I think enough people complain about it. I hope not. I know that, uh, you know, well, here's what pisses me off. I'm not to go off topic or anything to veer off, but what pisses me it's off, fun. I've had this happen multiple times, is have um, GameStop say a game is new online and ship it out to me and it's open. Or oh, just the disc. New online. But they'll put the sticker to keep you. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's even a better. Factory seal. Listen, to, listen to this. They say it was new, but sent it out to me in a GameStop case. Didn't even have yeah. the original case. Yeah, <sighs> I've uh, been there. Yeah. I've gotten in many, like, many, re- many arguments about that. Meet the return. Like, I'm not buying that's this. Insane, <laughs> dude. Garbage. If it's not sealed, that uh, it's not new. Well, that's right, exactly. so they've actually changed their return policy now to where you don't get as many days to return it. So if it if the damn mail takes right. longer to get to you, they count it from the day they ship it, not the day you receive that's, it. Yeah, yeah, I believe we, it's we 14 days. I could be wrong, but yeah. they, what you're saying is, yeah. um, if you're buying new games, don't buy them from GameStop. Just go to Amazon. Exactly, or Target, or fucking Walmart, or somewhere. Because, I mean, yeah, yeah. Walmart you're buying new. Only go to GameStop I, for used games. I think all WalMarts do this, but they cut the game down ten dollars always. Mm. I think they're all doing it now. Yeah, but every time I've not the last, seen that, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. the last I, I four years, some, mine's been doing it. 
I think there's some PS5 games that they don't do that with, but yeah, the majority of their stuff usually it's always at least a little bit less than elsewhere. Yeah, every every single Switch game I bought that has come out in the past three years has been ten dollars below retail. Nice. And so I would say with, I guess uh, the the same. one bonus of going to GameStop is you do get those points if you're the pro member and you can save those up to get extra stuff. That'd be really the only bonus we get. Points, if I, yeah. points if I, are ten dollars off. Right. If I walk up and I don't, if I get a game that's yeah, not that's sealed and I can't peel that plastic off and pop that bitch open and smell the newness, I don't want to pay for it. I'm not paying new prices right, for I it. I get. Mm-hmm. Just that thing. Well, have you seen the ones yeah. that they that they field scrap? So they'll take a brand new game that's actually sealed. Like I got a bunch of them the other day um, from a friend, and um, one of them's Anthem. Right. So original Anthem on Xbox One. They put a uh, previously owned sticker over the barcode on the back of it, even though it's still sealed yeah. in the in the plastic, and then they toss it. So it's like, hmm, you know, what are we doing here, GameStop? They're practicing. We're selling like open new games brands. and then selling pre-owned sealed games. I don't get it. <laughs> well, at least they just put it in their really. garbage like that. Hell, when I was working at Circuit City, they would do something similar, and then they would have me gather it all up. And take it out behind the building and smash it with a hammer. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I smash it with well. a hammer. I, I, well. Straight up. I took. No. I uh, there was tons and tons of games and accessories they wanted me to toss that I took home while I worked there. Yeah, a ton. They wanted, they wanted to throw a whole Vita out. I mean, they threw Uh-oh. the Vita out just because they weren't selling it anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, no, take that. I'll out. make it disappear. Don't myself. worry. Yeah. Exactly. That's wild, man. I don't get that company at all, any of their policies. I believe it's sadly, but a lot of those kind of policies are what's going to be the final nail in their coffin. Yeah, I think. it yeah, is. Probably. Yeah. I mean, Which sucks else, because it's just what a other waste chain, of good inventory. What other big chain video game stores do we have? None. You don't. You don't I mean, have any. None. We don't have but any chains, so not here. Well, you go up to Canada, Canada, you got EB Games in Canada still, but that's the only other one. And it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same but store. Honestly, yeah. my, my theory is that the future of gaming will all be digital media. Yeah. We will no longer be buying discs. We're so going to be point, buying that license. Well, and honestly, yeah. I, I think that we won't need game stores. I think guys that have like convenience stores will start seeing spinner racks at their counter. Yes. With, like, the, the, I agree. The, the top three games for the current <clears throat> consoles, or something like that. And I, I, I don't think I we'll agree with you. Game store anymore, which I hate. I want them to stay around, but my my theory is, I think that um, Xbox and PlayStation Next Generation are all digital. I feel like oh, yeah. Nintendo is going to stay physical for one more generation. I've thought that for a while. Uh, they may not, um, but I'm, I just feel I, like I'm kind of curious as to what like Nintendo's Next like Generation may be. Is that I don't know I but it's the the issue with going full digital the the benefit of being physical is you save a lot of hard drive space. True. I don't know how the overall physical sales as far as digital sales go because mm-hmm. with Nintendo and with any other system, if you have the physical if you have, actually have a physical copy of the game you're using, it saves so much space on your hard so drive. Much space. Oh, it yes. and that's, that's so much space. Yeah, I prefer that. I hate digital, and that's one of the I mean, reasons. I think, I the, I think reasons. PlayStation did it right, where just. You just sell two versions of the same console, one that's digital only, one that has the physical, and you can just dip into both markets. It's like, it's going to hurt them that much. These consoles, you're going to have to have, I mean, we only have up to four terabyte that you can use for like a PS5 now, but you're going to have to have an eight or 12 terabyte hard drive to be able to put all these games for the full library. You know what I mean? That's like going to jack up the price as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you get a you get a two terabyte right now, You're, I paid... 200 for my one terabyte and that was on sale That's and like three two games. Terabyte, yeah yeah where are you, yes, well, it well, what, what kind of hard drive are you buying though because i've i've bought four terabyte hard drives for like 80 dollars well not hard drive ssd i'm sorry yeah yeah. Uh, i bought the mm-hmm. ssd for xbox and for my ps5 yeah so here's so, here's my uh, question though like why is ssd yeah. expensive why the hell did xbox do it so stupidly where you bought their digital console and you didn't get as much storage space like, isn't that the thing? Like when they did their uh, digital Xbox, it was like had less space on it they, than your your actual. They, it's probably so they can buy their SSD. Yeah. That's why. Mm. So you turn around and spend more it. money for an expenditure. Because they're very. Money. The thing with Xbox, I don't know if you guys have dived into it yet, but their SSD is proprietary, and it's it's OEM, so it's made by um, 
they partnered with somebody. I can't remember who it is, but it's an official Xbox product. Right. So they made it proprietary. So this entire lifespan, you can't use anything but that proprietary mm. SSD. Smart now, on their part. Play, play, it is. PlayStation did it right. Yeah, that's you can use any SSD. You know, so. Yeah, but I think right. PlayStation's kind of outselling them right now. Oh, big However, time. Uh, PlayStation just uh, two weeks ago um, is now releasing an official SSD. So they're putting out their own. So I don't understand why they didn't do that. SSD, you're just going to buy the cheapest one. Yeah, I, it, the thing with their official one is that it is like literally the highest specs that are out there as far as read speed and everything. Yes, so they have reason. shown that. So there is a reason. Why I don't think it's at, at the end of the day, as far as what you're going to see performance, I don't really think it, the, the difference in speed is probably not going to matter probably at I all. Mean, I don't know if I'd notice it, but people swear that you can notice it with SSD. I'm just so, I'm just so I, happy I, that I, the load screens are so quick on my PS5 that I can't even read the game hints anymore. It makes me happy. Well, I'll say that I got a Fire Cuda SSD, and it, it's fast as hell. I, it's mm. just as if I'm running off the console, so you wouldn't even know a difference. So. Right. I just so, say I mean, a regular SSD and PlayStation's SSD, there might be a speed difference, but it, measurably, yeah, there's probably a speed difference, but in practice, it's going to be unnoticeable to probably not existent. I'm just saying in reality, that's it's more. It just it seems like a, a marketing gimmick that they're trying to sell. It's faster, mm -hmm. but in, like in reality, it, it, the, the the speeds are so fast, you're not going to tell the difference anyways. It's, yeah, it's it's marginal. Like looking at the numbers side by Man, side, it's, yeah. it's a difference, one. but it's a small difference. Milliseconds in the scale of things. Yeah, yeah, milliseconds to where you you can't tell the difference. Well, hey, I mean, milliseconds for hundreds of dollars. Part. We don't yeah. have a millisecond to wait, Mark. We ain't got no. time for that shit. Time Wait. is money. Yeah, Time right. is money. Man, yeah, I wish and I was saying that while playing money the PS1, people. bro. Come on, man. Go oh, it's 10 minute low time. I'm waiting off. Go make a sandwich. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> literally, I hooked up a PS2 yeah, the other day to test it, and I was waiting on the game to load. It was The Sims, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is taking forever. Like, what the hell? And then I had to realize, like, oh shit, that's right, I'm on a PS2. It's definitely going to take a while. <laughs> like... It's just not it's the like same. Like, like CD, DVD. Mm -hmm. I got um, I got a modded PS2. Uh, the HDD I have on that um, actually makes like all of those games that have terrible load times. I it's you still get load time, right. but I can have like a large game done in like 15 seconds. Now. So yeah, you, there's a yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, in like you 10 years. Did you put a Sega drive in it? The what? Did you put a Sega drive in it? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually won that uh, doing a waffle. It's the only one I've ever done. So I didn't do any of it. It was already pre-done, but That's yeah. Cool. yeah. I just yeah. want to know, because I Googled it and I had to let you know, EB Games is owned by GameStop, the parent company. Figures. But they, but they run themselves that. better. Uh, yeah, people say they're like, you know, more professional. and I mean... They're nice because they're, they're in Canada. EB Games... There used it's to be the Canadian. That might be. That, Columbus, that's probably right? just because it's in a it's a company in a different in a country. So different countries have different standards and cultures. Yep. Yeah. Like you can have the same company are. all over the world, and you're gonna get different experiences based on the country you're in. Yeah. Yeah. I I can say I um there used to be an EB Games in Columbus, and right down the street was a GameStop. Mm -hmm. So for years, I thought they were just two completely different game stores. But yeah, I remember the back going away, and then learning way later on, like, oh, EB Games isn't even supposed to be here. It was like That's a franchise or something, yeah. It was yeah, cool. It's, a, it's an American company. Just like we got Tim Hortons here in town, and people are like, you got Tim Hortons there? But Tim Hortons is in like three states, like let's be real. <laughs> three well, so, out uh, of 50, Mark. <laughs> so so here in Athens, where me and Tony are, we uh, we had an EB Games in mm -hmm. our mall for years, a long time back. Oh, yeah. And, and interestingly enough, that they EB Games became a GameStop. Yep, lasted for a long time. Then, but yeah, but back then, Electronics Boutique, like, because that was the yeah. real name before EB Games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Electronics Boutique, they were owned by someone different. And I think that GameStop absorbed them somewhere, maybe gotcha. like early millennium, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just remember walking in and was like, wait, the sign's different, but the store's the same. 
Yeah, this would have been like 98, 99 when the uh, EB Games was here in Columbus. Right. So. EB Games was sense. purchased by GameStop in 2005. Ah. Oh, wow. I thought it was earlier. No, nah, that's what Retail really? Insider's name, which okay. saw the locations in Europe and the U.S. rebranded. Everything's earlier when you get old. Ten years ago, it was actually yeah. 15 or 20. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was on like elementary school at that point, maybe middle school. Yeah. This one, like, I think about like Final Fantasy VII. I think it's like, oh, that was like 10 years ago. No, <laughs> no. 25 no. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, while. I, I played thing. that like, when I was like a young teen. Same with Ocarina of Time. I always, I'm like, yeah, man, you know. Nope. 25 years as well. <laughs> that was like five when that came out. I, uh, my, my common thing to do is say, uh, you know, that was like last week. No, last week was like two years ago. And, yes. Yeah. Last week was yeah, at least a year. year bare, like minimum, bare minimum last week yeah. was a year ago. Yeah, typically. <laughs> That's funny. Come on, man. Oh, hey, speaking of funny stuff, someone added this on, on there, which I thought was neat, talking about the, um, hang on, what's her name again? Oh, yeah, Miss, Miss Mika. The streamer. So, um, so I guess most most recently she beat Elden Ring using a dance pad. What? Well, that's really, yeah. She beat she, a fucking dance well, pad. Yeah, she she beat that's Melania. Wild. Yeah, she beat Melania using the dance pad. That's... But hey, what's even crazier? The same that same streamer. She beat Melania one handed. Also, like with a control. Like she used one hand over the entire space of her controller. Pretty wild. Y'all, y'all should watch some of her stuff. That's nuts. Pretty impressive. Yeah, if you put a if dance you want, pad, something. That's a lot of practice on just getting the controls wild. down. What you need to do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. If that you want wild. something to make you feel like you're a bad player, go and watch this. No I'm shit. A bad she... player. I don't have the. I don't have the time to even you know, practice that. <laughs> that's, well, that's. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Like, I've been trying to beat the um, Radagon and Elden Beast for, I don't know, like six months now. And, oh, okay. Th this girl beats I'm... the final bosses with one hand. Ha and a dance really pad. Play that game. Yeah, yeah, and a dance Elden pad. Ring's, that game Elden Ring's great. Yeah. Dude, that reminds me. People I love somebody, that game. Somebody played through. I, I think it was Crazy Taxi with the Dreamcast fishing rod. Oh, what? shit. Yes, that's I want to before. see that. People would use like yeah. alternate controllers just to try to beat other games. Like a fucking yeah, either it's like a fishing rod or some drum set to try to mm -hmm. beat a game. Love it. That's a wild. Now I did. Uh, I ran I into a guy. It, I sold a, a guy something on Mercari, and I started chatting with him on Facebook actually. And he said he actually goes to game conventions up in like Chicago, and he sets up tournaments with weird controllers like that. So like he would have two people oh, playing yeah. Tetris with a dance dance pad. So like you you know yeah, you that's would, cool. I was like that's pretty neat and he so he bought that U Force I don't know if you've heard the the Nintendo U Force uh, it's yeah, like the yeah. the hand tracking controller. Oh yep, he bought so mine. Terrible. I know it was so bad. I but like, it though. Shit, I got like two hundred thirty bucks for that thing, man. I was happy. How much Damn. did you sell it for? Good like two hundred and thirty bucks. It was complete in box. It's like a brand new. The only thing it was missing was the paperwork. I, I had mine new in box, and I sold it last year, and I I sold it for a hundred. See, I bought it for a hundred like last oh. year, and then resold it this year because I was like, I need to get this other thing. Yeah, I'll dude, tell you I now, wish six, I seven had seven years ago, that. those things weren't worth. Anything. I know. Oh, I've seen. Right. Hell, we had one like at Retrorade set up there forever. Book. Well, you get another one in there, one. let me know. And it needs to be new in box. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, totally just snagged that one from a, from, a, from a buddy at our game convention, man. That's really That's where cool. it's at. That is where it's at. Gotta, gotta love that funny stuff. Oh, Keep it yeah, going. man. <laughs> For sure. So what, uh, what, what local game conventions y'all got coming up? Uh, on my yeah, I got end, a big one. yeah, you go ahead. No, no, I said you got a big one. Oh yeah, well we got two big ones coming up. Um, the twenty fourth of this month, we have Cleveland Gaming Classic, um, which is the second biggest one in Ohio. It's nice. it's pretty pretty damn big. Um, so that is coming up, um, and I'm I'm hoping to go to that one. Um, the thing is, you know, tour is setting up there. We always set up all these conventions, and it's uh, it's a four-hour drive there. Um, by the time I'm done and helping to pack everything up, it, it man, it's going to be so late. I probably have to get a hotel and 
Mm, look into floor, dry, floor look into an Airbnb. Bag. Don't do a hotel. Just find an Airbnb, like a cheap one room Airbnb. I've never, I've never worth done it. that. It's Don't worth it, it. dude. It. It's you'll like sixty four yeah. bucks. You'll probably wind up with a whole house if you get like one that sells just rooms out of it. You can get like a room for like sixty four bucks for the night, and then like if nobody else rents a room, oh, okay, you got the okay. whole house to yourself. It's it's way better than hotel stays. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to check into that. It's then. easy. It's sure. on an app. Yeah, you literally just that. download a profile and you're you're looking for rooms wherever you want to go. I'll, yeah, I'll right. definitely look into that. This, uh, <clears throat> like I said, it's a it's a large convention. Um, it, de it definitely does rival um, a lot of other conventions nationwide. Uh, it's not quite quite as big as tour, but it is pretty big. It's a cool convention. Uh, people love it. So we're we're setting up there. Um, like I said, I would like to go out to that one. I've went out to five this year, um, and we set up, at, I think, all of them. Nice. So that's been really cool because um, I don't normally do that. I don't normally uh, go to that many conventions a year, usually like one or two or something. But um, that, that's been cool. But, yeah, like I said, that's coming up on the 24th of this month. And then we have our convention, which is November 5th. And uh, I know we're, we're going to talk about all this in another episode, but um, – that's the biggest one that we have in the state and definitely rivals other conventions, you know, across the country. So nice. um, we have a lot of new things happening this year. We're doing a lot of new things. Um, once again, upgraded buildings because we expanded um, our vendor hall rivals some of the even the biggest convention, you know, in uh, the U.S. So, to, you know, I'm o over 220 tables right now. Damn. Good. Could possibly be adding more, actually. Hell yeah! Um, and then we have like a seventy-person waiting. List. So Woo. people want to be there. So it, it's you know it's really it's really growing. Yeah, I did you see y'all sold out. How many v how many VIP tickets was it that, that was sold? We sold out two hundred and fifty VIP, and it's all sold out already. We're still two Damn. months out. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, still two months out. So. We're getting order in every day. Yeah, right. we got to we got to try to plan that next year for sure. Next year, I next really, year really there, want you guys to come. Yeah, next year is going to be really. We get Mark. We'll fly Mark's ass out there with us. Already, we're yes, please. When in November is that convention? I'm, November fifth. I'm trying to get Mark to come I'm this year, and I haven't seen him in to years. To that. Do it. Well. I mean, next uh, year will probably probably a lot easier. Yeah. Gives you more time to plan for it. Plan it. Yeah, we'll plan it out for sure. We'll have a date shortly after so we can get it all planned out and stuff. But uh, I'll oh, yeah. definitely still be promoting the podcast there. Um, I've got no less than seven or eight collabs planned with, like, other YouTubers and stuff. So that'll be cool. I'll be bringing up obviously the podcast and everything that we're doing together. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, nice. we got tournaments going on, the, the big vendor call. Um, we're going to have a VIP lounge. There's... Um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of tournaments. We're doing a, co a cosplay event this year, which is really cool. We're bringing in, like, a team, uh, outside team of people that are going to run the cosplay event. Nice. So that's, 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 that's something really I've cool. definitely found is, like, it, it really takes a lot of that getting people together and having other people run that kind of thing. Like, we, we recently yeah. got a, got yeah. involved with a Smash tournament organizer with Typo House Games. Uh, really cool mm -hmm. dude, and like I'm trying to work on getting him in to our next big convention next year. Maybe running like a smash tournament during the convention. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't call ours conventions that. I'm a little I'm a little more humble. I like to call mine like a shop and swap event, you know, something like that. I don't, it's not a game convention yet in my mind, even though I've had people call it that. Well, man, you guys are. Bro, it's a game dude. I love <laughs> I love to see it, dude. I wish I could go, man. I want to go so bad. I just love to see it, dude. Just see you guys and support you and everything. Well, um, how about this? You come to our event, we'll come to your event. Well, yeah, man. Exactly. Of course, of course. That's a deal. Let's do it. Let's do uh, it. But then, like, the only other thing I was going to say, is, which is pretty cool for this, we're also bringing out an outside team of people. Um, they're Glotaku. They are doing an after party for us this year. Oh, nice. We're going to have a several hour long after party, so if people want to stay out late and you know, mm, they, yeah. they took these days off of work and they got a hotel and, hey, you're not done for the day. We got an after Get party. Wild. So. Nice. Get wild. Get so, wild. Yeah, we, we got that company uh, running that, so that'll be real. Hell yeah. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, let's keep, let's hear about uh, Game Central Station events. Oh, man, we're nothing. 
We just, you know. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Okay. Like the fastest, biggest growing one in Georgia. That's the way I like to describe it. The fastest growing game convention in Georgia. Well, you own that, dude. You got to own it. That's right. That's, a, that's yeah. our yeah. slogan. That's my slogan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's the slogan. Oh, yeah. Right. You can stick with it. You can't. I mean, yeah, you know, over the, over the course of what? I think we've been doing it like two and a half years now so far, and we've done four yeah, shows total. And this is the biggest one yet. We just, uh, I think we're like two spots from selling the whole parking lot for for the days. Like, it's it's grown from 11 vendors, or excuse me, it's grown from two guys in a garage to like almost 30 tables total 40? now. Like, Yeah, close to 30, 35 or 40 tables and then next year we're shooting for four, the forty to fifty mark. I think we can make it happen. I gotta, I gotta ask. Mm -hmm. So, how are you gonna brand it when you like you are the biggest, or you just like you stop growing? Like, how are you gonna rebrand that when you're not faster growing? Or you, you hit the well, top. How are you gonna say, okay, so here's the, the way I look at that. Like that. So, I don't know of another game convention in Georgia that's doing anything at all. So, other than Fair like enough. the biggest one, which is a, an expo, it's not really a convention. I guess it's more of an expo. They have like the the yeah. small vendor hall, but they have more of like shit you can go in and do, play games and like you know yeah. console rooms yeah. and stuff like that. Um, but there there is the biggest in Georgia. Period. There's no competition against that at all because they're like a damn four day event. They're actually up against like MomoCon kind of like size. So as for right. like a small shop and swap convention, we're the only ones in Georgia doing that kind of thing. So I've really been trying to team so up with all the. Advice. Well, yep, exactly. So I'm trying to team up with the guys in the southeast cool. down here with uh, Game Jam South and Southeast Game Exchange, trying to really team up with those other smaller conventions in the, the state surrounding us and plan ours to yeah. where we can, you know, do ours either after theirs or before theirs. That way we can go there and promote or vice versa, you know, because we really want to try to uh, uh, try to drive the crowd from from South Carolina and from Alabama as well. Yeah, dude, that, that's the way to do that. Where's uh, Southern Pride at? So Southern Fried Gaming Expo is in Atlanta, and it's that's the big one. So no, it was actually what downtown you guys Atlanta. Maybe consider doing oh, that's um, right, that's right. is maybe setting up your stuff there and, and attending those and do kind of like what we're doing, mm -hmm. promote yourselves and uh, get to know those people that are running. Oh yeah, so see if we've been you can do some kind of a get my help. Yeah, yeah. See if you can do some kind of you know just oh, yeah. help each other. Cross and, promotions where it's at. That's, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. And that's actually how and I met Shannon. Shannon, Shannon's actually the guy that runs the Southeast Gaming, or no, excuse me, the Southern Fried Gaming Expo, Southern the big Fried, one in yeah. Atlanta. And uh, I met him yeah, at Southeast cool Game dude. Exchange the first year I went there. Yeah, he's he, a cool dude. I like him. Yeah, Shannon was promoting his his uh, big event there, and I met him and got chatting with him and talked to him a little bit. And then we met Austin, which is the guy that runs Game Jam South and Southeast Game Exchange. He's a really awesome guy Austin's as well. Austin's a cool guy. Looks like we're frozen. It could Are be my internet leg. I, I'm still good. I see you guys moving. I'm not yeah, you're moving. completely frozen on my screen. Give it, give it a second. It'll come right, back. Gonna, I've oh, noticed it from time to time. You're gonna upgrade off of that, off that dial-up internet there, Brandon. <laughs> the McDonald's Wi-Fi you got? McDonald's Wi-Fi. Yes. No, my ice cream shop Wi-Fi. I mean, no, dude. They, they got some fire Wi-Fi in here. I gotta say, it's working pretty good. Yeah. Damn, hey, um, dude. I can't pink see it. Pink Pelican in the house. Yeah. Uh, pink, pink Pelican ice cream, nice. Yeah. Shane, you should go talk so to him yeah, about being a sponsor. Well, yeah, no, in fact, hey. for any viewers that are out there, there in Panama, Panama City Beach, come on down to the Pink Pelican ice cream shop and hang out with yours truly and get some good ice cream. There nice. You go. And, and come sponsor, yeah, come sponsor our event. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the podcast. Can I and the podcast. Oh, right. <laughs> Sponsors oh, everywhere. Sponsor our lot. Sponsor me for the rest of your life. Sponsors <laughs> everywhere. Oh, I, th I think it's working. They're looking at me. Oh, oh there he's you just go. A, he's just a weirdo in the shop talking to himself on the computer. <laughs> talking to the video game video game computer. What's this guy doing over here? No, they, they think I'm conducting very important business, so... It is. It's very important. Like a, important. Like a great tie-dye shirt. I don't know if it gets any more important <laughs> yeah, this than this. Cash. <laughs> this is casual. I thought he was just sweating from working so hard over there. Uh, that just made that Florida business casual that I'm, I'm not used to. Yeah. Now I can't see Mark at all. I've got, I clicked out. 
Refresh. Ah, he'll come back. Refresh. 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 All right. Dial well, the bed. video, what sucks is I'm recording the video. So <laughs> what I see is what YouTube sees. It's all good. That's what I was trying to think of. Our five viewers can see us still. I'm there totally slipping off the camera. Just want you to know. <laughs> well, thank you, five viewers, for sticking with us. <laughs> so uh, what's uh, – is that anybody playing anything right now? Or Anybody got anything on the horizon? Or? Mm, I think I'm going to do some more Metro when we get off here. I'm going to need to play into that a little more. That's pretty good. Metro oh, Exodus. You know, you know, we games right now. Haven't been able to play know, like past week. Mm. You yeah, know I'm playing something uh, old and antiquated like always. <laughs> what you playing? Final Fantasy IX. Nice. 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 Are you playing uh, the remaster that they put on Switch? Or? Yes, I am. Yeah, and I that's thoroughly a, that's a enjoy one. it. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, I guess the improvements, the, the quality of life improvements that they added to it, super cool, super cool. Yeah, I me. played through that last year. That's a good. That's that's the best way to play it, in my opinion. Right? You may have to check that one out because I actually really did enjoy nine. Yeah. Sadly, I never beat it way back in the day, so that was my concept. It's I like, had hey, this is a great new way to enjoy it. I remember the tedious parts. I can kind of like <laughs> skate yeah. through mm -hmm. now. Oh, the choice. So, yeah. Definitely a lot of quality of life. So it makes it uh, a, a, it feels like it makes it a better game to play now. You know what I mean? In 2022, like some of those games, that, some of those RPGs that were very grinding RPGs, just don't hold up for people or don't bring in new people to them because mm. of that. So yeah, and it makes it a little tougher to grind. go back to it. Well, it, it yeah, the grind. Well, some, well, some the grind. people don't have time for that grind. You know, exactly. that, 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 that sounds like you problem to me personally. Like <laughs> 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 <That, laughs> RPG grind. To pay, uh. That's what the G stands for. People just don't understand that. Role play <laughs> grind. There's people that enjoy grinds in games. I know. I do. don't. There's a whole Facebook group for it. It's called RPG Grinders. Nice. <laughs> shoot me. Shoot me in the oh, yeah, That's not the same kind of grinder that you're thinking. Of. <laughs> oh, probably not. We're probably not about the app, but hey, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Cosplay grinders. <laughs> so, I will say, um, for me, <laughs> I don't have anything specific. I, I'm playing through technically, but where's it at here? I just had it sitting here. Um, I, I did a little update stream last night or attempted to with my daughter, hmm. and we started playing um, the new Kirby, Forgotten Lands. Oh, okay. And that's a really, really cool new oh, Kirby game yeah. because it, it's a great it's, game. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different than like your average Kirby game. It it throws a lot more. Um, it's not open world, but it throws a lot more open level design to the game. And you know, it's it's not a a two D platformer. Um, it's Kirby not a. Way. Yeah, it, it it's an evolution to Kirby, which is really cool to see. Um, because the last one that came out on Switch, which is a great game, I'm trying to remember what that's called, Kirby. Um, was it Planet Robobot? No, that was 3D. Oh, that was 3D. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, that was also an excellent game, but it did nothing new. It was just more 2D Kirby, so um, this definitely evolves it to 3D game. Um, it reminds me very much of... what well, It doesn't have the open-worldness. I guess this game's not really open-world either, but it reminds me a little of uh, just oh, a yeah. little. Um, it gives off that vibe. So it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, it's cool to have something to play with her because I have trouble finding games that she can get into. Um, right. That's a really yeah, difficult like, thing. Just get troller. <laughs> just start playing Skyrim. Well, you, you know what she likes? <laughs> she likes um, She likes the, what is it, the Zelda, um, the one that came out after Breath of the Wild, the Warriors game. I can't remember mm. what it's called right now. Hyrule Warriors. Mean, she likes the, um, the uh, two-player mode. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just it's like the a Hyrule Warrior game, just like Hack Slash, pretty much. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors, and then it, it it gives more story to Breath of the Wild and stuff. And she like she does like Zelda, but she doesn't um, like to play it single player. That's what she tells me. So, um, yeah, well, so I'm playing sometimes that. though the Hack and Slash um, kind of game like that can get her into it. You know, while she's younger, and then she'll appreciate it when she gets older, being able yeah. to play back through the story of the older games. I'm really hoping so. Um, she does like Minecraft and Roblox, and that's it. So, all kids love Minecraft. Jesus Christ! That's all you know, need is Minecraft and Roblox. We talking about Minecraft, Dude, Roblox, no, because I get slang Roblox. 
I get stuck playing Roblox, and I hate mm. it. I hate. I don't like Minecraft. I've I, never. I, I enjoyed Minecraft, Minecraft that's, I, but I like Minecraft by fair. myself I mean, when I was just doing my own thing. Whoa, I just I can't, can't get into it. It's not you gotta play online. Anymore. That way you, 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 you spend what? hours making something, and somebody else comes here and just blows it up. It's fantastic. I, I did mm -hmm. like Dragon Quest Builders, though. See, okay, I. I need to play Builders because I wanted to it's play fun. it and something, something had come out right before it dropped that I was totally involved in and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get around well, to that. You can just it's hop. Me. Oh, it's a lot like Minecraft. So I was like, oh, well, maybe no, I don't want to. It's, it's like an RPG Minecraft. Obviously, it takes the Dragon Quest world and it's a um, canon like game. Minecraft and Minecraft. They're making an actual game. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway... <laughs> Lost you there completely. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, no, what I'm saying it's like a canon game in the Dragon Quest universe, so it's kind of cool. Um, it 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 mixes it up. I don't like Minecraft. Like I said, I like Builders, but um, right, you don't have to play Builders one. If you play two, just jump into two. Honestly, um, there's way more. There's just way more going on. Uh, way bigger one. But if you can't, if you don't have to play one to play two, then why name it two? more Dragon Quest Builders. I don't know, I'm just smart ass, really. Dragon Quest Builders again. Mar Mark's <laughs> on his shit tonight. <laughs> an asshole. Tony, you said you're, you're uh, streaming Metro after? Yeah, I think I'm going to play some Metro Exodus. Yeah, you ain't trying to stream something with me? I just yeah. not, I don't know. No, I mean, we can. You. Right? I am streaming after, but that's cool if you want to do Metro. I just wanted to plug that we are, um, I think Mark is going to try to a little later on. Nice. But, uh, How long it takes yeah, me to finish my homework? Yeah, we'll see. Get that homework to, done. Uh, to, Forgot about it. Homework. It's two to nine. I was like, oh, I, I was thinking about it, like, oh, fuck, I didn't get this done. Yeah, man. Was, homework's for nerds. My son does that same shit. <laughs> He'll cram it it's right at the end. Homework. It's, it's Excel, which is just annoying to, to do. Here's this, this lab you have to do. So you, there's like five ways you can do this one thing on the spreadsheet, but you have to do it exactly the one way. I hate it so much. It's just tedious. I hate Excel. But, uh, Office. Are you are you playing anything right now, Mark? No, I mean, last week I just finished redoing like all three Mass Effect games. When I say mm. replaying, I skipped like all the dialogue just to play through it. My son actually yeah. got back into the Mass Effect. He's he's waiting for a new Mass Effect game himself. He's like, I got all the way to Andromeda, but I'm not playing that one because that game sucks. <laughs> it does. I, I, I played it like three times and I just can't finish it. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I played. Uh, the, they took the good thing and ruined it. The remakes of uh, or the remasters of um, one through three. I played those. No, last I was looking year. at probably because I've gotten the old uh, the old near game the remake. Yeah. I haven't played it, and I haven't played uh, Automata since it came out like 2017. So that's good. one. So, so I, I want to go back and play both Nier. games. I didn't like Nier? Automata. Oh, see, I don't well, like my Nier, first one, but I loved Automata. Well, mm. it was my first introduction to a. Uh, was it? I can't remember the the dude's name, but he makes the very specific types of games with Nier. Yeah. Because it was, yeah. and because Nier play. is a weird spinoff of like. Like the first, what's it, Dragon Guard games from like PlayStation mm -hmm. Two? One of the endings from like the first or second game splits off and becomes a new. It's really weird. There's yeah, multiple and then the game. Nier ha really doesn't have anything to do with Automata either. So, mm, at all. Uh, and well, not... it, yes, and they're they're dis they're the same timeline. They're just so far apart that it, they're not really connected to each other. I heard that they're completely separated. No, like no, not, no Automata really. is like a thousand years in the future from from mm. Nier. So because there are there are characters, there's like two characters from the original game that make a cameo in that game. I, unless they change it, it's supposed to be in the same timeline. It's just so far removed; they have gotcha. nothing to do with each other. Uh, Nier is a very hard game to go back to. Before they put out the new uh, remaster, I actually tried to go back to that, and that game is I just couldn't do it. Mm. I, mean, and like, I, 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 I never PS2. liked the game. I just never liked it to begin with. But and the weird thing I, is, there's like there's like two versions of Nier. You have the original Japanese version, which is the same as the remake, and then you had some weird American version they made. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think it's like the same plot, but like the main character was like completely different. But I think they did that because <laughs> yeah. they're like they, they they thought the the what the American market and the Japanese market would be receptive receptive to as like a main character, and I might they be tried to localize yeah. it. 
No, you're, yeah, so you're they, like, right intentionally because change the development. if you look at the cover art of Nier for here for the PS3, you would not have any idea it has any relation to Automata with the, the art yeah, style. Yeah, because it's technically like two different design. versions of that game. And the remake yeah, was right. like, well, they just they remade the, the Japanese version of it. Cause right, they remade the Japanese. When they wanted and to they're do. trying to Americanize that game when they brought it over here. Like, yeah. completely. Yeah, it came over in like a weird time. That cover's ass, too. I never liked it. Even, like, the logo doesn't... It, it just looks yeah. like a shit game. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. I like that they just brought Nier to uh, Switch. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, about I don't know how it's going to play, but yeah. yeah. I've heard it's run. it runs good. 60 frames a second. So nice. Have you tried, yeah. it, Have you tried the, Returnal on PS5 be... yet? No, I mean, I still got to grab that. I have not bought that one yet. The last... Like a uh, triple A game I bought with Deathloop, I think. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I still do. I want to get Returnal for sure. Returnal's pretty good. Like it's it's very clean playing. Like it plays really well. It's just it's fucking tough, man. It's one of those like it, it's brutal. Yeah. You're gonna fucking know, die and you're gonna I die a it. lot. It's a um, it's a roguelike, so I know I want to get it for fifteen or twenty dollars. I won't mm. pay a dollar more. <laughs> right, I, I, that's how I am with roguelikes. Well, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they game. offer that for free a couple months back on the PlayStation Network? Not that I'm aware of. I don't, I don't believe so. Oh uh, yeah, I don't, I don't pay attention. So. I just download the once a month. And I, just I download them, yeah. every free game. Been on there since I'm never gonna play like any of them, but I'll I have them. <laughs> yeah, my library is exactly. huge of all those that's games, that, free games that I just never never download. They're in my library, though. Yeah, I just add, grab it. I mean, you add them to your digital library, you got them, you don't have to play them, but if you want to play them, you can download yep. yeah. them. Yeah, like also, I look at this and I'm like, oh, this is a game I'll never play, but I'll download it. I'll, I'll play <laughs> right. it anyways. I will show you. I know we haven't really done any pickup stuff, but I did get this in the mail at the beginning of the week, finally, from Limited Run. Astro oh, Aqua nice. Kitty. Nice. Yeah, this is number 453, but the weird... I don't even really collect PS4. Like, I don't go after PS4. Um, I've got maybe, like, 15 games. But this one was limited to 1,500, and it was their smallest print run for PS4. Mm. So I'm like, I might as well grab that, because if nothing else, I can use it as trade bait or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't. I honestly don't care too much, but I did have to wait eight months on it, so... <laughs> That's that's basically what yeah, I do with any cool. limited run stuff that I pick up in trades is like literally just use it for trade bait for other shit or sell it and put money towards something else because I have no I, I, like I, most I, limited run stuff like you don't open and play it like everybody really just uses that as like a collector's item you know for the most part. Right. So like, what's the point if you're not gonna play the my, game? My thing exactly. is is that um, like the collector's editions I definitely don't open those like I got the Scott Pilgrim one up there mm -hmm. I got the Super Meat Boy. But I don't have a reason to because I have the games digitally. Right, so exactly. So I got those because I legitimately do love the game. I really do love that game. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. beat em ups ever. So I got that for that reason, and that satisfies me. So I'm, right. I'm cool with it. But um, the Astro Aqua Kitty, the reason I don't care about that is because, as you guys know, I'm going after a full Vita set, and that is a game on the Vita. So... I don't care to own two of them, but um, <laughs> that's why I don't care about that much. I know right. I have to get it. So. I like six feet of games. That's why I'm never going to change. Yeah, I mean, did I, did I ever show you guys the last two Vita games that came out? Yeah, I think I think you got them on the, uh, yeah. the last one, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's pretty cool. But I think that's uh, that's all I've had come in recently. I haven't um, had spending money lately, so... I'm just waiting. As soon as, as soon as my uh, my package gets dropped off from Ricardo, it's like been a week now. FedEx can kiss my ass, but they need to drop that shit off. Get... I'm gonna have me a stack up coming in the mail. Oh nice. Oh yeah. Well, you gotta yeah. play that, bro. I know. I got my Rob. I got my standalone Rob in a yeah. box over here. You need to break him out. Oh, you got stack up on the NES. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude. It's a it's a black box, uh, complete in box with all the accessories, oh, yes. big box. Yeah, it's. Oh nice, dude. I'm glad to hear that, bro. That's just awesome. waiting on uh, waiting on my package to get Rob, dropped dude. off and get my money back from Mercari. I I have wanted a Rob for so many years. I can't even count. And I have come across them, but for stupid price. So I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make you mad. I'm gonna make you mad. Yeah. Good. What's up? So. I bought one. It was a standalone Rob in a box. Oh, no, excuse me. I take it back. I picked up one loose like Rob. It didn't have. It was missing everything: battery cover, claws, basically everything missing. 
for 40 bucks. Yeah. A week after that, I picked up a standalone Rob in a box. So it's like the little small box. I got that for yeah. 150 bucks off of Facebook Marketplace. Oh. And then a month after that, I picked up a loose Rob with all the accessories that was the cleanest Rob I'd ever seen. Like, oh, I mean, like man. sparkle clean. And I wound up selling that one and for like others. 300 bucks. I still got two. I got the loose shitty one, oh. and then I got mine, uh, my standalone one in the box. Uh, yeah, this, well, I had three of them. I, ne I never had a Rob them. the whole time, and then all of a sudden I wound up with three of them at once. I was like, damn. If we can find the accessories for that one, I'd be down. I could maybe. Is it like? Can it be cleaned up, or is it just it's, it's shit? No, it's still it's in decent condition. This is, I just got it on display up here since I don't want to take the one out of the box. Not bad. It's just dusty. Nice. It's the year dusty. 2022. We can rebuild him. Oh, and I've got the accessories. I've got all the accessories in the closet for him. Um, no, you say that. But then my for stack it? up there, yeah, because the stack up actually going to come with the accessories with it already. So then I'll have right. I'll have two Robs, a uh, stack up, and then two sets of accessories. Nice, dude. Yeah, I had some. They had one at the uh, last convention I went to a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they were asking six hundred dollars, and it didn't have any of the parts. Get the fuck out of here! No. Yeah, I swear to God, dude. That's I sold mine too cheap. Every time I see him, <laughs> fuck. Every time I find one, dude, there's a ridiculous price tag on it. I'm That's like, That's crazy. I'm, For 600 bucks, you could just that. add $200 and buy a goddamn deluxe set with him in it. I know. I know. And I know. It's ridiculous. Somebody actually, you know what they had? They had a test market and yes, mm. complete in box there. I so that had that. the Rob and everything in nice. it. And it was $1,700. That's stupid. There's one floating around on the Facebook pages right now for less than that. I think it was like, what, eight or 900 It's the test. The test. Uh, market one with the convention prices bro yeah sometimes convention it gets ridiculous around here they're crazy crazy mm -hmm. you might have time that nobody's gonna buy it exactly it's just a display piece at that point yeah. it's it, like hey look what, what i got I always tell them it's like yeah yeah it's a brag show man that's what it is like look hey my dick's not small like <laughs> yeah look what i found can't you tell can't you tell <laughs> Small dick syndrome. I think it's funny though. Like the first time I was introduced to Rob was like on the like uh, was it Mario Kart DS? Mm. It's like yeah. what is this? Yeah, yeah. I looked into the no robot. No idea that it even what it was before then. Who is this Just robot? Just a tad before my time. And now he's a Smash player. Like yeah. now he's a damn Smash yeah. character. What the hell? He, Mark's saying that's still my favorite Mario Kart. It, it hasn't changed even with uh, Eight Ultimate DS is my favorite. Yeah, it's up there for me. I love that game, dude. Yeah. Game's got a lot of replayability to it. People are still playing it online with X Band so, or not X Band, X Link Kai. Yeah, X Link. Yeah. Because it, it also yeah. had like a the only like Mario Kart that actually had a good like battle mode type type right. story. Mm, thing. Right. And I think that's one of the thing is that it had those modes that really that nothing has done. Yeah, it's really. I cool. could like make you could use like the the touch screen to, like make your own little uh like d like a pixel logo and stuff yeah. on that. Yep. There's a lot in that game yeah, you can do that like, game since just don't don't have. Right, I know. And I was like, I was super looking forward to Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS because I'm like, all right, Mario Kart DS did it right, let's go. It's no. a good game, but it's not Mario Kart DS, so. It's just, you don't it's a really get none of that game. customization at all. Yeah. No, I, don't, I, think, I, I think my two favorite Mario Karts would be DS and then Mario Kart Wii. Because I think Mar I like a lot of Mario Kart Wii's tracks. Mario Kart Wii is very, very good. But I think my second favorite is probably Super Circuit on the GBA. I think it's one of my least favorite games. I just don't like really? the courses. My least favorite is Super Mario Kart, the first one. I think that's my least favorite. It's so that's bad to go back to. Oh, I love the OG. Man. I love that. But I, I like that one, too. Because it was like, obviously, like it was like it my first experience. But I mean, it's because it's like the only Mario Kart where you actually had to have skill to beat it. Like you just can't get on and play in the air. That's true. Crash. You're gonna yeah, you're gonna wipe it all. In between, Mario like the controls with the drifting that you have to do on the Mario game, Kart like, DS course, online, bro. You have to be perfect to like win first place in some courses. Like Mario it, you Kart had to have DS skill. online, dude. I'm telling you, you had to have skill in that game, dude, with the drifting and the snaking and the the slinging and all that stuff, dude. I'm telling I'm, you. I'm just saying, some of the older games, you required some level of skill. I don't not like Super Mario Kart. It's just, it's down there for me in terms of all of them. It's got, it's got, um, it also has like such high nostalgia. And I've, mm -hmm. I've played it recently too. And it's still, it's, and I, I, I like the game. You haven't had video for half this podcast, dude. I don't know what's nah, going on. Nah, he's up. Yeah, he's up. I see him on mine. Yeah, for me, but I'm also recording the video. 
Uh, you so throw, you, 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 you like throw some up over top of it. Really All right, you're on there now. <laughs> All right, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> but I just uh, recently put there. a shirt on, so you know. Yeah, exactly. Oh hell yeah! You missed not not this is the point of the podcast where we really start taking our clothes off. <laughs> I mean, I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> Go take that trash out, Mark. Go take that trash out. I don't out. believe you. Hey, hey you can't. Spin, my trash spin that camera me. down for a minute, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. I, Let's I, see. But, uh, uh, yeah, man, you guys got anything to promote for this week? Anything else besides uh, Swap and Shop? Or anybody mm. got any streaming plan for next week? Any? I have something set. I finally got, like, any my, my whole set. I gotta set up my OBS with all my stuff for my streaming stuff. I haven't had a chance yeah. to put it together. Yet. I'm trying to figure so out how to get. I'm probably gonna start streaming later this week. I'm trying to figure out how to hit those numbers on Facebook because I can't stream from my console to Facebook, so I'm not exactly right. sure what to do. That yeah, so that's that's the pain in the ass that I was actually working with myself when I first started to stream. You actually do have to buy like an external capture card and stream it through there into your laptop into OBS and yeah. then upload to Facebook that way. It's the only way you're going to be able to do it from your way. console. Yep. Capture cards aren't that expensive, though. No, no. no I, I highly I recommend would... the Aver Media one that I got. It's cheap. It's like 4K. It transfers 4K through it, so you can actually play your shit in 4K as well still. Because I was looking oh, at one especially for like, the Switch. So, it's the only way here, to stream Switch you, games. Mm-hmm. I'll show you the guy. Yeah, I'll show you the one that I've looked at just because. I know uh, you got a lot more shit you're wanting to do with the retro stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with the retro team, can be able to access everything. So basically, I just need to have something that's, you know, all the way down to Atari, but also will work with PS5 and at least be able to do the 60 frames. 4K would be great. Well, with um, your internet, with your 60. internet being that, getting that damn uh, fiber internet here soon, you're going to be all right on your streams. Your stream's going to look really good. Dude, Mine just looks like what? ass. I can I can upload at 1080 is the highest I can upload, but you see it in about 720 on my streams. Yeah, but obviously the what, stream man. quality and I, uh... like YouTube quality is different. Mm-hmm. So it's like pre-recorded. You can upload it at a at a better quality. From- exactly. Yeah, I'm brand new to uh, capture cards, but I found one. I've always looked at Elgato because that's the well-known name. That's, yeah, that's what like... most of my friends use. Eh. But I found a capture Obvious. card that is cheaper than the the uh, top Elgato card that does 4K 120. This card only does 1080p 60, or 4K 60. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The top Elgato card only does 4K 60. Right. The frame rate is what I care about in the stream because that's what you're showing off. You know, uh, you're streaming. You're not getting that 4K for the viewers. So, no, not at all. Um, but this is an Aver Media 4K capture card with VRR, and it is. Hold on, let me see how much it is. Sounds it's like cheaper than that Elgato card too. I think it was like 150, maybe. The Elgato one's like 270. Yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah, the one I got was the Aver, Aver Media uh, Live Gamer Portable 2 right. Plus. <laughs> yeah, here, here it is. This is the Aver Media G2 Live Gamer Extreme 3. And it's 170. Yeah. So if, if I can get something that does that VRR and will be able to work uh, getting the retro tank stuff, it will be set for sure. So I, I highly recommend Aver Media over Elgato. I don't know. They. The Aver Media freaking uh, tech support also was amazing. Like when I first got mine, I didn't know how to fucking use hey, it, so I was hey, trying to figure it all out. Is that the one you got? That's the one I the, got. Okay, so listen, the, the the one that I just told you about is only ten dollars more. Right. Wow. Damn. Deal. Ten dollars more than. The and this an external bought. capture card uh, as well. Yes, external capture card. Yep. I mean, I, I bought I bought this one it. that I've had for like fucking two, three years now, maybe more. Cause like I really, I really did start streaming like pretty heavily. Uh, back when like I was getting out of Conan, I started streaming pretty, pretty heavily. Every night I was yeah. doing at least two to three hours, and um, that's when I bought this capture Damn. card. And hell, I've been using it ever since, and it, it does its job for me. I mean, like I said, if my internet was better, it would. Yeah, if my internet was better, I could put out a better stream. But that's kind of where I'm at. Right. I know that like I will get streaming in there, but the plan is not for me uh to to be streaming all the time i i've got focused on other things but oh, we yeah. want the streaming to be in there with our team of people that we're trying to get together so for sure uh, we'll see how things go it'll be sense. cool to 
to jump in that streaming to capture footage for these videos we plan on doing for those. I mean, uh, one of the first things I want to do is on the CDI. Um, I've used that two times since I've had it because I'm waiting to be able to play through these games and capture the footage. Right. Because I know, I mean, I know that, look, I'm not going to replay. You're not going to catch me playing. Well, Brandon's not wearing pants either. Ever again. <laughs> No, look. <laughs> you're not gonna catch me playing this unless I'm I'm uh, recording it. So was that some Caesar's play- gambling game? I yeah, I ain't playing that. This is actually fun. Video Speedway's good. Oh, yeah, that's a good. I won't play an NFL trivia game. Pink I'm good trash. on the encyclopedia. I did pick up this that I'm interested in, but it's a point and click. Nice. Oh yeah. Those are actually pretty fun to watch on stream. Tell me. Tell me if you guys have heard of this game. This is a homebrew that came out from the CDI it's called Nobelia. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I haven't even opened it yet, but I picked it up last year. Um, it is a Bomberman slash Zelda game. Nice. It's, so it's pretty Mark, neat. You're going to like Mark, it. Mark, yeah, Mark would be super interested in seeing that because it's a very, very gorgeous game. Hell, yeah. So, so you say. He's going to show us hey, one day. I, look, yo, I want to show you I'm one day. Uh, but I did Someday. want to bring it up about um, our Patreon. Uh, we started the Game Junction Patreon today. Uh, the link is below, I believe. We have it down somewhere under the stream. Um, that's Like I said, that is not fully set up. I did put some stuff on there, but I want to add some actual content to be ready for if somebody does subscribe. They've already got content to look at and good go that's exclusive. So... Um, if you do that, it's helping us out. Uh, we have a lot that needs funded. Um, so, I mean, we greatly appreciate it. You get exclusive content. You'll see the giant list of everything that we offer for the three pri- uh, three different points there. Um, but, yeah, there's a huge list of stuff. We'll be doing exclusive live streams. Uh, we'll be doing interactive stuff with people, some streaming with people, um, just different stuff like that. So, uh, And I, ha- I had that requested to me. That wasn't even something I was going to do, but I actually had a few people ask. So. We nice. went ahead and set that up. If you're interested, it's it's there. The link is below. And uh, follow that link tree, baby. One. Link tree in the comments for sure. Yeah, definitely hit that link tree. It's got all the socials for Game Central and Game Junction, as well as the podcast page, uh, even the sale platform for Game Junction. It's got everything on there. So check that out. Um, that will be reworked a little bit this week. I have some stuff to add and kind of uh, just kind of make it look cleaner. I want every one of the um, things to have its own like icon for each social and stuff like that. But nice. um, yeah, I mean, you guys got anything to promote that you can think of? Game Central oh, Station okay. Shopping Swap. Shane, uh, the Buzzsprout stuff. Buzzsprout stuff. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the affiliate link. <laughs> we yeah. have a uh, Buzzsprout affiliate link, which is also below. Yes. Um, if you sign up for a paid account, we get $25 from that. Um, so that, I mean, that helps us in that way because we also pay for Buzzsprout. So it can help pay for that. If anything's extra, then, you know, it just helps us in that way. So sign up for Buzzsprout, listen to some good podcasts, make your own podcast, sure. upload them yourself. Use our link below in the comments. Absolutely. And I'll say one more thing. Um, we are always looking for uh, sponsors Anybody that's interested, um, I know I have a lot of people on my Facebook personally, and then also people that know other people. So um, if you're interested, uh, send one of us a message. You can send it straight to the podcast page. That gives access to all of us to see. Uh, Mm -hmm. So definitely, if you're interested in that, anything like that, uh, affiliate links, um, things that you might be interested in collabing with. So um, Help promote us. We'll promote you. Absolutely. Uh, That's all my end for this week. You guys got anything? I am good to go, brother. I got nothing right now. Covered some good topics today. All right. All right. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, that watched live tonight. I think this worked out pretty well with the, the Facebook. Rather than going to Discord, I think it worked, worked pretty well. So we appreciate Absolutely. all you guys. And uh, we'll be back next week. Hi, right, guys. See y'all. Peace. Later. Later.
Walmart. As the uh, 